times our country was considered as a vassal country to some other countries, uh, most notably to uh, Hungary. Uh, uh, but uh, afterwards, prior to Ottoman times, we were uh, independent. And after Ottoman times, actually, we experienced Austro-Hungarian -Hung times, starting from 1878, when, according to Berlin Congress, Austro-Hungaria got uh, a right to occupy Bosnia and uh, 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 Herzegovina, uh, at the same time, still considered part of Ottoman Empire. In 1908, uh, Austro-Hungary uh, formally annexed our country. After uh, World War I, starting from 1918, our country was part of uh, the first royal Yugoslavia, like big uh, South Slavic state. Uh, after Second World War, we were part of, uh, of a second Yugoslavia, the communist uh, uh, Yugoslavia, in which status we remained until dissolution of former Yugoslavia in 1991-92. In our case, it was in 92. So si since 1992, Bosnia and uh, Herzegovina is again an independent state. Uh, I would actually, so this would be, would be brief. Uh, it actually, this was uh, uh, brief about uh, history uh, of our country. You probably know that after that, after, after gaining independence, we experienced a war. It actually, uh, it, it lasted from 1992 until 95, and the war ended by two peace agreements. So both of them were uh, negotiated in the US. So the first separate peace agreement called Washington Peace Agreement from 1994, separate peace agreement only between some parts in the conflict, some sides in, in the conflict, and a comprehensive, the final, uh, the whole peace agreement from 1995, uh, Dayton Peace Agreement, which finally uh, completely established a peace in our country. Uh, since the, that time, our country is uh, developing in a peace. Now you wouldn't recognize that once it experienced a, a war. When you, if you come to our country, you wouldn't even, even see or you wouldn't uh, recognize some, 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 some traces of war or so. Uh, now I would, I would. Uh, I would actually I would concentrate on on two uh, points of development of our country. One is uh, internal de development, and one is called like external uh, affirmation or foreign policy affirmation of our country. Regarding internal development, uh, you probably know that uh, in the in the recent times, or even few years ago, or even even uh, one year ago. There was some talks about some, uh, uh, let's say, disturbing developments in our country. We were, at, at the time, a country without a government. Uh, m many political disagreements emerged in our uh, country, so that even some, some people uh, doubted how our country would develop further, how it would develop uh, in the uh, future. Even uh, at that time, following election in October 2010, for a long period we were without a new government because a new government after those elections uh, was not yet uh, formed. Even at that time, uh, we were uh, heading towards some records in not having a new government after uh, election. Everything changed uh, at, the, at the end of, of the last year, actually. Uh, late uh, 2011, there was a certain breakthrough in, in development in our country when political forces, the relevant political forces, the winners from the last election, uh, got to an agreement, not only on forming a new government according to, to last election, but also on some vital uh, political issues, some vital political uh, questions. Uh, the point uh, in these developments was that uh, probably for after uh, realizing that there, there was no breakthrough, there was no uh, solution in, in the preceding months, the political forces uh, understood that, that the, the only way to, uh, to, to get to, 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 to further development is to reach some agreement. Basically, 
uh, the, the point is that our country is uh, a country which always needs a kind of uh, agreement. This is b basically very unique for, for our country. I will try to, to, uh, to explain that. For example, in Western democracy, let's say most notably in, in uh, democratic uh, traditions of uh, Western Europe, you usually have, after some elections, you usually have one political party leading a, a country. Uh, uh, even, for example, now in the US, you always have in executive part of the government, you have one political car party after every election leading the, the country. In uh, executive part, is, it is always so. But for example, in legislative part, it is even not always so, because sometimes it happens that here in the US, one party has a majority in one chamber, another party in uh, another. So for every law, they would, uh, they would actually propose to adopt an agreement is needed. So because no party can, in, 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 these, uh, in these actually, uh, uh, in these cases, uh, uh, be working alone. So they, uh, in, in, in these cases, when one party has a uh, majority in one chamber, another party in, in the other, uh, they need to have a consensus, actually. They need to have uh, agreement on, on some vital issues. Uh, for example, in, in some democratic traditions in Western Europe, for example, in Germany, you have, you have two, uh, two, actually, two biggest parties. You have Democristians and Social Democrats. Usually, after every election, one of those parties is forming uh, uh, a government usually with some small sa satellite parties. But only two times in the, in, in the post-World War history, it happened in 1966 and 2005, that according to election results, no one of these parties was able to form a uh, government alone. So they went into so-called Great Coalition, and after that they were, they were oriented to, to uh, negotiate between uh, themselves for every vital issue in the, in the, in the working in government uh, Afterwards, so for example, what now is sometimes here uh, is sometimes a case in the U.S. in legislative power in Congress, when one party has majority in one uh, chamber, another party in the other. When, for example, what for example in in Germany happened only two times in post World War II history. In our country, it is always so. This is point that our country, because of of its uh, uh, complexity, actually because of its uh, 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 structure, its uh, historical structure, always needs to have a consensus, actually to have negotiated solution on every issue. So this is probably reason why sometimes it is, it is not easy uh, uh, to go through some processes in, in our country, because basically a consensus, a negotiated so solution is always needed. And this is probably reason why we we waited uh, so long for, for uh, forming uh, uh, a new government after election in October uh, uh, 2010. So this would be point in uh, internal development of our country, that a negotiated solution is, is, always, is always needed. Regarding, uh, and of course in that, in that, uh, uh, in that uh, uh, internal development, it is worthy to, to mention that also many other uh, achievements were reached uh, at, at that time that some some things which which actually which uh, which seemed uh, even impossible uh, 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 to get done in those months were reached uh, uh, since late uh, uh, last year so it was really a breakthrough in development of our country and now the internal atmosphere is is we can say that uh, uh, very good so we are we are going further uh, everything is going with uh, consensus. The re relevant political parties, the victors from those elections of October uh, uh, 2010, are agreeing and are negotiating and are agreeing on on uh, almost uh, every vital issue. Regarding uh, uh, foreign policy, this was actually the uh, second point. I would mention that for a long time we have identified the two main foreign policy goals of our country would be or is uh, like equal uh, uh, main foreign policy goals, membership to the EU and membership to the NATO. 
we are working on those uh, processes for for a long for a long period i will tell you now where we are now in those both uh, processes regarding the approach toward uh, the membership to the european union we are now uh, right in the process of uh, actually at the end of process of ratification of stabilization and association agreement what basically means that after uh, that agreement signed we signed that with the european union in 2008 after this agreement uh, enters into force uh, we would become an associated member of the eu and now regarding ratifications the only lacking ratification is by the european parliament all other member states and of course our parliament ratified that uh, for a pretty long long time ago uh, and now we are just waiting for ratification by uh, european parliament and then to become an associate uh, member of the eu in the meantime we also we also uh, we are also approaching the eu in other ways we are adopting standards we are we have already changed many laws in regard of of actually uh, adopting so called a key community communitaire of the eu we also in the meantime got uh, a visa liberalization uh, 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 status of the eu basically of schengen countries what basically means that we are traveling to the U eu actually to the schengen countries uh, without visa uh, and even uh, there is uh, certain talks that until the end of this year we could or we should apply for the candidacy status of the eu even regardless of uh, still lacking uh, uh, entering into force uh, of the as uh, stabilization and association uh, agreement just waiting for ratification by the uh, European Parliament. So this would be st stat uh, status of our approach toward the EU. Toward the other, the other uh, uh, main equal foreign policy goals, membership to the NATO, uh, we are r right now in waiting for activation of so-called membership action plan what is considered as uh, as probably the last step before membership itself so for for those countries uh, being candidate for membership to the nato the nato envisaged certain process called membership action plan uh, and of course it takes some time to implement it but in our case we are still waiting for activation for uh, beginning of uh, implementation of of of, uh, of, uh, of 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 that plan of that membership action plan officially we were admitted to the membership action plan in april 2010 uh, and now for more than two years we are waiting for activation of of, of it the problem is some uh, is again of internal nature because uh, NATO conditioned activation of the membership action plan, but fulfillment of some internal developments in our country, basically uh, a solution on so-called military property of our country. This is some very technical issue, some, let's say, let's very, very of, of very technical nature, really regarding internal processes of our country, what basically means that you're military because uh, you are candidate to the NATO membership, your military should have uh, registered to themselves all property they are currently using. It is not really actually, it is not uh, easy to understand to why was the reason that we were not able to fulfill that condition so far, because this issue is, 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 uh, is rather connected to some uh, our, our internal processes nevertheless we solved that uh, in the in the recent months we got political solution or political agreement uh, on that issue and now it remains only to be technically executed so when it would be technically executed this political solution no doubt that solution w was found and that this would be implemented it would, would be uh, executed uh, then we would be almost automatically admitted to the uh, implementation of membership action plan. Unfortunately, we were not able to fulfill that condition until uh, recent historic NATO Chicago summit. 
uh, uh, still uh, the communique or the reactions of Chicago summit or NATO member states on our developments and our candidacy toward NATO membership are very positive. And now we are just, as said, waiting for execution of that already resolved issue. Upon that, we would be admitted to, uh, to activation of membership action plan. Until that time, uh, what we are doing now is actually implementing so-called intensified dialogue. So intensi uh, intensified dialogue uh, is being implemented by us since 2008 as a pre-step prior to uh, membership action plan. So this is status of our approach toward NATO and the EU. If you would be interested later, maybe you can, we can, we can also maybe uh, answer some questions or so. Uh, regarding our in, uh, international affirmation or international development, I would mention that uh, we very uh, successfully finished membership to the UN Security Council as non-permanent members, member of course, from uh, for uh, 2010 and 11. Although some countries at that time, when we were candidate for uh, uh, UN Security Council membership, expressed some doubts how a, a country uh, known of having some uh, internal problems at that time would function in the UN Security Council, and 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 uh, still uh, it proved to be, we can say, to be. Uh, efficient to be really contributing to the work of the UN Security Council on many issues, for example, on some very difficult issues, uh, something like, uh, like, like Iran or some, some other issues. But mo most notably, I would mention that, for example, in regard of, uh, of Libya, the resolution which basically enabled international intervention over Libya was made uh, uh, effectively by our participation, because at that time in the UN Security Council, of course you know you, you need nine, uh, nine uh, votes, but at that time, except uh, Russia and China, you already had three countries abstaining, uh, not supporting intervention, basically uh, India, Germany and Brazil. And it is so it means you already had uh, five countries not supporting. Of those remaining 10, eight supported without uh, reservation, of course. And then Portugal was reluctant to be decisive vote. So decisive vote there, D. D were decisive vote at that time, really responsible dealing and acting in the UN Security Council. And afterwards, Portugal just joined it. So the final. Uh, result was 10 to 0 with 5 abstaining. So it, it, it was probably the crucial example of our proper functioning in the UN uh, Security Council, of course, with many other participation, many other uh, resolutions, not only adopting uh, resolutions, many other works, even one month of uh, having chairman in office uh, of the UN Security Council. This was probably one of uh, one of uh, most splendid time in our international uh, affirmation. So I would actually stop now, again, uh, uh, saying something basic facts on our country. The next, as mentioned, would be these internal developments, where the point is that an internal consensus on almost every issue is needed. And now we have a real breakthrough in this uh, regard. And the atmosphere is really, really good. And now we can say that, that really almost everything is going well, is going smoothly in our country, while the final, final point was our international developments, international affirmation, where I would mention, uh, I, where I, I, I mentioned uh, our approach toward uh, NATO, uh, EU, and our recent membership to the UN Security Council. So thank you very much, and I'm open for your questions or comments.
the situation in Bosnia, how the relations between neighboring Croatia and Serbia. Um, just more of a point of information. Um, I know that you have your three basic components of Bosnian um, society as to uh, Bosnia, Serb, and Croat. Is that sort of codified in, in people's ID cards? Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, so uh, the first part of, uh, of the question is regarding internal structure or internal situation of our country. Yeah, of course, as said, our country is a mixed country. So we have uh, three ethnicities in our country. We have actually uh, Bosniak uh, ethnicity, which is in uh, percentage slightly less than one half. We have then Serbian uh, ethnicity, which is uh, slightly more than one third and the uh, Croatian uh, ethnicity, which is slightly uh, less than one-fifth. Uh, then we, we have also in our country some uh, minorities, with, of course, everybody, everybody having individual rights, while collecting rights would be given only to those constituent peoples, Bosniaks, Croats, and Serbs, while individual rights are, of course, given to everyone, regardless of uh, ethnicity, including uh, minorities, of course. Minorities in our country would be considered as, as, as Slovenians, uh, Macedonians, uh, Germans, uh, Albanians, uh, Jews, Montenegrins, or some other, some other, uh, some some other uh, uh, ethnicities, Ukrainians, or so, some Roma, uh, or some other uh, in in our in our country. And with those uh, complex structure, our country has been really serving during history as an example of. Uh, of uh, uh, common living, actually the, those three main constituent peoples together with uh, minorities living, living in, 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 in not only in friendship, living not only in peace, but even in uh, living uh, uh, together, uh, perplexed actually among uh, themselves with many interlinks. So there was for, actually for, for, for even a millennium. Actually, there w was not a country of some of some uh, uh, real uh, disagreements or some real d disputes uh, among uh, their people. It is true, of course, that from time times to time, through some historical occurrences, uh, most notably through the recent war, those relations actually among uh, those uh, ethnicities were damaged. No doubt ab about that. But still, uh, uh, very very smooth, actually very, very, uh, very uh, uh, speedy after, after the war, their uh, re, uh, relations improved. For example, after the war, people uh, immediately started to, to contact their friends and even uh, relatives because of many mixed marriages at, at, at the time. Even now, actually, there are some, uh, uh, so they, they started to, to, to contact them and re-established uh, these uh, connections. So it is not in our, in our country that there was some, some, let's say, some iconic, some arch uh, disagreements uh, among people uh, uh, living there. Although, of course, actually, it shouldn't be said that it was a perfect harmony. But a perfect har harmony you hardly have uh, in any any place uh, in the world. So we can say that uh, those people living there with many inter interlinks uh, uh, were living uh, together and are living together now. And everybody living there is really. Uh, ac accepting to be their part of, 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 of that country, of course, uh, retaining his or her uh, ethnicity there, what was, what was never a problem in, in our uh, uh, country. So we, we, can, we can say that this is functioning well. For example, in, 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 in government, it, was, it, it has been for a long time, even, even from Ottoman times or after from Austro-Hungarian times, then we are communist times. We had, for example, in public service, those, this so-called division of duties among ethnicities or some, some uh, other people. For example, you knew exactly, let's say, in 19, let's say, 
1980, you know exactly, for example, that the mayor of Sarajevo should be, be or must be, for example, Bosniak. It could not be Serb or Croat. Or four years after, it must be Serb. It could not be Bosniak or Croat. Or four years after, it must be Croat. It could not be Bosniak or Serb. So this kind of division of duties actually we always had. This is not a Dayton invention. So th this is uh, something what for just market, market uh, this uh, kind of uh, together living, joint living in, in our country. And really, uh, this was this actually has been and is not is not a country of 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 uh, of disagreement. This is not a, a country actually in which uh, ethnicities. Uh, cannot actually obey, not able, or now are not able to living uh, together. On the contrary, this is country which we just really uh, has served as examples to, in, uh, to, to, some other, to some other mixed countries, to some other complex countries uh, in, the, in the world. So this is uh, regarding this internal development of, of our country. Still, of course, as said, uh, some differences on some political issues remain. But these differences are not necessarily of ethnical background. So for example, if, if uh, you and me disagree on some issues, it, it is not necessarily that our disagreements is, is, is obligatory on, on, on ethnical background. For example, we uh, don't agree on some political or some, some, other, some other issues. So ethnical, ethnical actually issue or ethnical element of our country has some uh, importance but not, the, uh, not actually the only importance in, for example, uh, discussing or deliberating some political uh, developments of our country. And in any, any case, uh, regardless whether these differences of ethnical background or political background or some, some others, uh, a consensus is needed, as said in the first part. Consensus is needed, and, and uh, now uh, it is uh, functioning pretty well. It means consensus is needed by political parties which won the last elections. So the winners from last elections, they are, they, they are somehow, uh, they, are, uh, uh, they, they, they got somehow to, to uh, negotiate it among uh, themselves in order to reach solution on this uh, development. So the, uh, in, in regard of uh, of, of, uh, of ethnical issue in our country. This is something what we can say is functioning and we can, uh, we can expect that even in the coming time uh, that we, we, will, we will stay in this uh, functioning of, uh, of, of structure of our uh, country and uh, we, we, can, we can be sure that by uh, negotiating, by getting to agreements uh, uh, our country or its government uh, can can really function. So this would be regarding internal uh, internal parts. Regard the other part of your question is some something actually regarding regarding uh, ne uh, neighboring countries. Of course, we, we mentioned the region, but in regard of really uh, immediate neighbors, we have uh, we have actually as neighbors Croatia, Serbia, and Montenegro. We can say that relations with them are, we can say, pretty good now. Uh, even it is somehow connected with the issue that, uh, that the, the atmosphere in the region itself is very good now. Even some people argue that it has been never better or for a long time has, has not been uh, better in comparison with now. So the cooperating is, is, uh, is uh, uh, very well. With some of those neighbors, some minor issues remain. But of course, it is to be solved in the, in the coming time. Uh, uh, not big issues, not actually not some problematic issues. Maybe just to, to solve some some normal uh, uh, issues between uh, neighbors, especially uh, between neighbors which are independent states for not more than 20 years or so. So this is some some normal pr pr process uh, or so. Regarding uh, uh, regarding uh, double citizenship of uh, of. Uh, of citizens of our country, uh, in, princip in principle, our constitution allows double citizenship. The only remark is that uh, the constitution, uh, actually the Dayton constitution solution uh, or the Dayton constitution provision is that double citizenship should be somehow under control of the state, so not completely 
liberal, not completely liberated, like, like for example, in the case of the US, when US basically allows double citizenship, even not asking for, for, for evidence of double citizenship. So uh, uh, we are not liberal so much. We are liberal in the sense that we allow double uh, uh, citizenship, but uh, that this double citizenship is under control of the state by the mean that uh, a bilateral agreement with that state uh, in order to have double citizenship is required. So this is our approach in that uh, regard. Some countries have that kind of, of approach, and this was somehow somehow uh, 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 somehow solved in the in, in Dayton that that double citizenship of our country would be regulated. Uh, in uh, so we basically we have uh, we have we, we allow double uh, citizenship uh, even uh, uh, in, in under condition that we have a bilateral agreement with those countries. In regard of neighboring countries, for example, what your question relates to election in in those countries. In principle, we allow uh, citizens of those countries to vote on our territory, basically or principally. In their, uh, in their embassies or consulates. I don't think that we would have problem even allowing to vote outside of diplomatic consular representation offices, but principally, let's say, uh, uh, their voting would be in their embassies or consulates. We don't have problem with, with, that. with, with, with that. It is functioning well. Even by our elections, sometimes we organize uh, when there is uh, sufficient interest, sufficient response. We organize election in our diplomatic consular representation offices abroad with consent of those states without we, we never uh, were uh, uh, denied those, uh, those uh, organizations of uh, elections here, our embassies or consulates. So there is no reason that we deny to any country to organize uh, uh, participation in voting in their embassies or consulates and in our t territory. Uh, in our case, as said, we, we are, if, if there is no s sufficient uh, response, we are, we are voting from abroad per mail, per post. It is also functioning very well. No country uh, ever gives any, any uh, objection to, uh, to our uh, practice to give our uh, citizens abroad in in those countries uh, right to vote either in embassies or consulates or to vote per mail f functioning well so really there is no 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 problem uh, regarding uh, uh, participation of uh, of uh, citizens of those countries even though they are citizens of our country when they vote for election in those countries so uh, something uh, Something also, you, you mentioned some boards also uh, it doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't actually gave some uh, uh, answer, or there is also some specific. Card and budget, actually say oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay. So on ID, ID cards, uh, uh, even though there was some, some, some changes in ID cards in the recent time. Uh, but in principle, there is, of course, no identity identification. There is some internal uh, political structure identification, I think, according to, to, to last change, that the people uh, have those options to identify in ID cards from which internal political structure, basically from which entity they are coming from. I think they have that option. Uh, but of course, there is no no need for ethical uh, uh, identification in ID cards. <coughs> Wondering, uh, is there any 
ultra-nationalist uh, activities or uh, uh, ultra-right-wing parties that, uh, because it was a, a peace in front and uh, for some reason uh, it, there are a lot of traumas in the society. I was wondering uh, if there are any kind of moves and how you deal with that. Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it is not, you know, actually talking about war in our country, it is not easy, let's say, to, to, to encompass all aspects or so. Uh, basically, our war, as said in our country from 1992 until 1995, was a part of uh, armed conflicts in, in former Yugoslavia. There was actually six armed conflicts in, in former Yugoslavia. The first one was Slovenia, the second one was uh, Croatia, the third one was ours, the fourth one was... Uh, Kosovo, the fifth one was southern Serbia, outside from Kosovo, and the last sixth one was uh, Macedonia. Uh, of all those armed conflicts, uh, the most terrible, actually, the most complex, and even the most casualties was, in our case, even up to 100,000 killed people. So uh, even in effective duration of war, uh, our war was uh, the, the longest one, although nominally the war in Croatia uh, 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 lasted longer, but effectively in our country. Uh, so uh, this actually, this actually, this is one of very unfortunate part of our uh, history. But again, I don't think, and also the people don't think that this war started because of disharmony among our ethnicities. Although, as you mentioned, there is some, there was some ethnical, ethnical background or ethnical, I would say, ethnical factor in. In, in, in war in our country, but I don't think that it was it was prevailing m moment. Of course, the people the people differ on nature of our war. Some people consider actually that it was an aggression of neighboring states, while the other people consider that it is uh, it was a civil war. I would not go into into that uh, discussion, but before that point where they differ. I don't think that uh, the reason uh, how we got to, to that point when they differ was because of ethnical uh, differences in our country, that was of uh, some, some arch ethnical disharmony or disagreements or even hatred in our country. I don't think. I think actually, or many people think, that the, that the war simply started because the political elites at that time freely, on the first free election, the first free election since before World War II. Those political elites at that time in power were not able to find solution, to find agreement on common future. Uh, uh, because they were, they were facing the situation when, they, when, when communism co was collapsing, when Yugoslavia dis was dis dissolving. They were faced with uh, uh, necessity to agree on common future. And they negotiated for about a year and a half and basically failed. After failure of their negotiations on common future, the war started. And then they deferred what was it, either aggression or civil war. But be, be, before that point where they deferred, basically the, the, the political elites, the, although you, you are true, the national political elites at that time were not able to find common solutions. So th this is a, this is actually uh, what basically led to these uh, very unfortunate occurrences in our uh, country. But as said, uh, in, as, in, as in some other instances in history, although maybe it, it was one of, uh, one of, one of heaviest, uh, the uh, relations among people uh, were damaged, as said. But not to the point that they were not able to repair, because obviously the periods of peace or or mutual development, or, or or living together, were longer than 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 periods of war, or armed conflicts. And then, of course, now now they are really repairing uh, those uh, those links. And we can say now that uh, that the reconciliation in our country, all, although not perfectly, but that basically occurred. So that we, we don't have we, we, we don't have actually uh, conflicting. Uh, society in our country, we can we can say so. Uh, so th this this basically would be would be would be this uh, this uh, uh, answer on 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 how the war affected us at, at that time. This is very unfortunate part of our history. We are leaving uh, it behind, 
we are leaving even that to some to 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 uh, uh, historians or even to 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 actually to to some legal or law processes uh, at, 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 at the, at the, from, from 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 that from that time. Uh, but in regard of further development, we are really going further and even together. giving a very nice, calm, pleasant, constructive view of the situation, which is, for a diplomat, very admirable. However, I see two areas that I'd like you to comment on a little bit. Mm -hmm. how, is, uh, how is your country coping at the moment uh, with the economic financial crisis in Europe? Mm -hmm. the, you know, the economic cushion that you would have had after the war and for the first 10 years effectively doesn't exist today. The European taxpayer doesn't have any more the same commitment to any part of the Balkans that it had before. Kosovo would be an example. I know it very well. People are tired. They, they want to support. But all other countries, my own country, I'm from Ireland, is bankrupt. So a little bit about your economics, your unemployment, how you're keeping some type of economic stability. <clears throat> and then secondly, could you talk a little bit about Republic of Serbska and Birchko, and what's going on behind the scenes, flowing from Dayton, obviously, to try to move towards, you know, a strategic stability for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So regarding uh, uh, economy, we must admit that the economic situation in our country is pretty bad, or we can say really bad. Why? Basically, uh, we never recovered it from the war. So. This is one, one reason. So we never reached the, uh, uh, the level where we were in uh, 1992 or 1991, even before anything started in former Yugoslavia. We, we just need the time. Uh, we never reached that point anyway. And uh, in the meantime, we had certain growth. Some optimistic views about our economy were present at, at that time, for example, a couple of years ago. But then it started the world economic crisis from 2008. Although not hit in the first way, we are badly hit in the, in the second, because we are not so, so, let's say, so directly connected to the world economy. But still badly hit in the, in the second way, not having time even to uh, recover, then hit by, this, by the current second economic crisis in, in Europe. Of course, there are still there is also some some uh, internal uh, internal actually weakness in our country that we didn't uh, didn't really finish the pr uh, privatization process. We we never recovered uh, some big companies and so so there is some uh, subjective weakness on our side. Uh, and in addition to that, we were hit by those two economic crises, and the final uh, result is that we are we are. We are in, in very bad economic state now. Maybe only few good economic uh, economic uh, uh, elements in our countries. First, we can say that we have uh, this potential on energy. We don't have problem with energy. We don't have, for example, in our country, any village without electrification. Or, if, for example, having this kind of uh, of uh, of actually. Uh, reduction in electric power supply. We, we don't experience that. So this for, regarding energy, we are in, in good state. And also, uh, good news is that we don't have foreign debt. We, we are not a debted country. Well, there were some, some, some certain even international reasons why, how we didn't, uh, didn't get uh, to these foreign debts. We only basically what we have is the the, the debt uh, uh, heritage from former Yugoslavia, and even under under present e economic situation, we are easily servicing it. So we, we don't have problem with energy. We don't don't have problem with, with debt. Everything others is in pretty bad condition. F uh, real economy is is uh, uh, pretty bad. Fiscal economy is uh, pretty bad. But we are striking efforts. It doesn't actually doesn't disturb our. Uh, commitment to the EU. Obviously, let's say, simply speaking, we are even the level where some weakest countries of the EU economy are, and we still have motivation to go to the e EU. We are not part of uh, internal discussions of the EU economy as well. And of course, uh, 
uh, we don't uh, we don't actually uh, we 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 don't uh, waive any single element on our commitment to the membership to the to the EU because of economic crisis. We are just we are just approaching uh, uh, with uh, uh, unchanged commitment. Uh, regarding uh, basically uh, Brčko, yeah, Brčko is uh, Brčko is actually uh, some some part which was not Brčko area. Actually, you know the area around the city of of uh, Brčko in uh, at the northern border of our country at the at the uh, right side of the uh, of Sava River. Another side of Sava is is Croatia. Uh, this actually this part was not solved by Dayton Peace Agreement because simple in Dayton negotiations they they were not able to solve that issue. So they they gave it to to be solved further. They agreed on obligatory arbitration process. So all sides agreed that uh, that sometimes after peace agreement an arbitration process would be introduced and whatever uh, result of arbitration process would be all sides are obliged to accept so this was solution in Dayton regarding Burchko and a uh, uh, few times uh, arbitration process was delayed finally it was solved in 1999 in the way that the arbitration process uh, solved that Burchko uh, is an independent area inside Bosnia and uh, Herzegovina in administrative sense. So it means that neither of two entities has control over that area. But at the, at, at the same time that in, in political sense that area belongs to both entities called condominium. So both entities have uh, uh, actually have a political, political ownership over Brčko area but neither entity has administration over Brčko area. Administration is independent inside Bosnia and Herzegovina and directly, uh, 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 directly subjected to, to the organs of the whole state. It was solution of uh, arbitration process. At the time, both sides, basically both entities, the Federation of Bosnia, uh, uh, Herzegovina and Republic of, of Srpska, they are uh, they are actually judges in arbitration in arbitration tribunal disagreed so n neither of, of those two judges accepted that solution nevertheless uh, the in actually uh, opinion of international judge prevailed and this uh, this uh, 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 solution entered into force since 2000 Birchko arbitration award is being implemented and it is considered as one of uh, uh, most successful part of peace implementation in our country. So Birchko really uh, started uh, to function and in many ways it was considered as example to developments of other part of the country. It is worth it uh, to, to, to say that uh, at the time, sometime after actually uh, because it was part of, of uh, international arbitration award. Uh, the political forces in our country agreed to change constitution, to change Dayton constitution. This is change actually amendment called number one because obviously the people uh, predicted that there would be more amendments. So they didn't say just amendment on Bershko. They said amendment number one on to constitution of Bosnia Herzegovina regarding Bershko. And they changed the constitution uh, in regard that they accepted uh, Birchko award. Although even without changing constitution, they are obliged by arbitration award. Nevertheless, they changed the constitution. So they wanted to demonstrate that they really accepted uh, uh, arbitration award of uh, Birchko. So this, this was accepted by all political parties. It is true that in 1992, when arbitration award was published, the government of Republic of Srpska rejected. It is true. Still, even having re rejected that, they are still obliged by arbitration award because arbitration award is given by Dayton Peace Agreement. So they accepted in Dayton four years before that whatever arbitration result, award results would be, 
they would accept. So it is not relevant that they re uh, rejected that in 1992, uh, even to actually to more to, to, uh, to add that they accept this, that is that they also accepted uh, constitutional change in, 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 uh, in which uh, arbitration award was included into constitution and recently also according to some to some uh, to some international demands the government of Republic of Srpska uh, corrected the maps in which Kosovo is incorrectly presented so not presented according to inter uh, arbitration award from 1999 and constitutional amendment to constitution of Bosnia uh, Herzegovina number one so they changed that they corrected that and this was uh, the remaining uh, condition that the international supervision, a part of supervision over the whole country, which is still in place, but over that area, because at that time considered as neuralgic, or it is not uh, now, but for that reason, it is uh, 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 as part of the, of the whole international supervision on our country, the Birchko, pa Birchko area got the special s supervision. And now, at the recent uh, uh, Peace Implementation Council uh, 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 board, actually, uh, 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 board of, uh, of uh, main international factors in implementing uh, peace in our countries, country uh, brought uh, decision to abolish that particular supervision on Butchko area, although although international supervision on our country remains in place uh, as set. But this is, this is one of, uh, one of uh, examples that also that, that issue was solved. And of course, according to, to arbitration, from, arbitration decision from 1992, 1999, and uh, amendment to constitution number one, Birchko remains condominium uh, belonging to both entities at the same time, but with independent uh, administrative inside the country of Bosnia Herzegovina. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for everyone. Just a small gift from Mr. Ambassador. No more of this day. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully. Thank you very much. Like thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was very yeah. We have thank you very much. delicious Turkish food. It's homemade. Please oh. join us. Enjoy. Thank you. We have Turkish food. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.